Sister Ananda, tell us what you're doing. Well, I am sitting in, let's get the name of the company, uh, the Boom, the Roasted Boom Cafe on, uh, where are we? Rhode Island Avenue. And 11. First of all, good morning, everybody. I forgot my manners. I'm here with my soul sister, love, Tanya Butler Truesdale. She's a fellow artist. She's a fiber artist, and I am a wire sculpture artist, as well as a mixed media artist. And I travel with my art job. We are getting ready for a art talk and a book talk. <laughs> Just happened to have one of the books here. That which awakens me. I brought my um, my book here because it has some information that inspires the wire sculpture, which is made from a coat hanger. And I started using wire coat hangers in 1995. I started writing and publishing my poetry in 1992. So it's I have all of it together. It's 30 plus years of being an artist in D.C. A self-taught artist. Like Tanya, I am a lawyer. I'm a recovery lawyer. Tanya is a practicing lawyer. And I came to art as a result of stress. And I started working with wire sculpture with the help of Irene Whalen and a team of wise, fabulous, creative women that used to shop and bring their art to Salon to sell. I was able to develop a divine diva. This Inspired sculpture in the shape of a mermaid. You see the copper ocean is one of the Yoruba deities, goddesses that has been in my life. I inherited her and him and Yang from my woman line. I just found that out when I went to South Florida, Bahia, in Brazil. And so today I am sitting with cloth that I purchased in. No, 1997, sorry, it's been so many trips. Um, and I wrap my sculpture in this. The, the cloth is sacred for me, so when I work with my pieces, I try my best to have something around me that reminds me of my ancestors. This work that I do was sent to me through my West African Yoruba ancestors. Oku is the deity over in blacksmiths. And so I know in my family and my spirit that we had some blacksmiths in our family. And they, take a look at this chair that you're sitting in. And the chair that I'm this sitting in. This looks like an Ogun throne, so to oh, speak. Oh, Tanya knows because she is a practitioner of Ifa. Uh, and the, the different Orisha have come to me through my art. So today, I am creating the base of the sculpture. And you see me with my little scissors from CVS. My wire comes from True Hardware on 17th Street since 1995. I've been shopping there. They know when I come in, I'm either coming to get something for the toilet, the HVAC, or wire for my artwork. Um, and so I'm going to show you how I'm wrapping shoes face and you can you can tell that she is a African woman because she has her hips. I'm making her in the shape of a mermaid. Uh, in in the Caribbean and in the the continent of Africa, Oshun often like Yim and Yang shows up as what we call a mermaid. This is an African inspired mermaid. You may have heard of Mami Wata. You may have heard of Yim and Yang. I know in Brazil, we just came back from the Yemen Ya festival, and Yemen Ya is the, um, the goddess of the country. Oshun is the goddess of Cuba, and in both places I've been there, and I've seen the images of both deities as African centered and European, and a mix of the indigenous people in the form of a, of a, um, of a mermaid. But this one right here, she got hips, and she gonna have like some hair, like how we like to do our hair. So let me 
show you what I'm doing. So I start with a long piece of copper wire. I cut it. And right now I'm doubling it. Normally I just take it and I, I go through it one by one. But I'm doubling it because I want to make this intricate design in the middle. I sketched the designs for my new collection yesterday. So this is one of the sketches. This is my first time actually sketching designs. Um, the last time I made a sculpture was 20, 20, 2010. It's been a minute. I've been focused on some other things. Painting, drawing, um, writing, um, teaching mindfulness. All of what I do is driving my it all comes from my heart, and it all is about expressing the real me. The real me is a daughter of Africa, a daughter of the indigenous people, a daughter of Yemenya, Ochun, Okun, Shango, Ochozi, Ewa, Ochimare, Okunba. All of my great eight. I think I covered everybody. That's what happens when you turn 58 <laughs> and you've been like in the mix. It all starts to kind of come together for you. And you might say, well, that's a lot of mine. But, well, that's right. It's a lot. So I'm looping it through. I've doubled it. Until I like to talk. <laughs> and I also like to sip good beverages and add the roasted boon cafe. It's quiet on Sunday now. I don't want all, everybody coming down here at 8 o'clock in the morning cause, on a Sunday because Tanya and I like to do our walk and come in here. But the energy is really good and it's very important for me to support black owned businesses and to come to places that I feel safe. Either it is a woman owned, black owned, person of color owned business. I started out yesterday creating the drawings at Jolt and Bolt, which is a woman-owned, I believe it's Asian-owned cafe in my neighborhood. And I've been there, been going there since 1994. So you see how I'm looping it? I don't know if I'm showing you. This is not a DIY video, but you know, just in case you want to try it, I'm just looping it. giving all my secrets away. If it's so such a secret, came from the ancestors, there's no secrets. If you feel called to try it, I say go for it. You know, one of the things that I've learned, um, because this was, this was passed down to me, this was a gift from my ancestors, but as I worked to create the, uh, the literature that goes with each uh, sculpture, and I got help through, um, Irene Whalen, who's the owner of Zawadi, she exposed me to the, um, the wire sculptures that were made in Southern Africa, in places like South Africa, as well as Botswana. And they take wire and they make cars and all kinds of uh, sculptures, bicycles, and when I learned that, I had an opportunity to go to the DeSable Museum in Chicago. It's a black-owned museum. Shout out to my godfather, Lucini Eugene Perkins, who exposed me to even more art there, and Margaret Burroughs, Mama Margaret Burroughs, who created the museum. I'd like to do a lot of shout outs to folks. But anyway, at the DeSalva Museum in the 90s, they had a fabulous exhibit from Botswana that featured the wire art. And you know, it's amazing when you're able to see what you've been given in dreams and in you know, conversations with your loving, wise, and well ancestors from the creator. And it passes through to you and you see it in physical form in real time it is fabulous that's a that's a true gift so 
there you have it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure this part with some more wire. I use probably for this, I'll probably use this whole container of copper wire. It's 75 feet, 22.9 millimeters, I think that's what it is. I'll use that for the entire um, sculpture, including her hair. And her hair, wait till you see that. That's going to be off the chain because I've been instructed to create, I don't know if I'm going to do this, I would just have to surrender like I always do. Bantu knots, y'all. Afros. Tall turban like, which I'm known for. The, the Erica Badu look, you know, from the 90s. Uh, but this, I'm telling you, it's precious. This is everything to me. This is my life's work. This is thriving my being art. The heart suited approach to being a failure. I um, want to take a moment and just read a little something. And be before you do that, Ananda, yes. uh, your work, let's put it on a black background so that it really shows up in the video. Hold on one second. Okay. I'm going to hand you my coat, which oh, you can turn. Can put it on a chair. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Right. Tanya and I are both into aesthetics. <laughs> there you go. And the Duwafe. The Duwafe is a Ghanaian Adinkra symbol that is for femininity. And these are Adinkra symbols as well. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing yet on that. But Tanya had a great idea for that. And so one of the reasons why we did this video is because we wanna show that as African-American women, we create wherever we are. That means even when you're drinking a green matcha with vanilla syrup made by Madeline at the Roasted Food Cafe, shout out to Madeline, um, that we make our art, we can be in conversation, we can be alone in our places, in our studios, but we make it wherever we are. Let me take a sip. Awesome. Making art is, for me, a form of self-care. It gives me an opportunity to express what's inside of me. It gives me an opportunity to um, practice my birthright of mindfulness, self-love, and self-worth. And so this morning, I happened to flip open to a poem, which I'm just going to read a little bit. It is called Ancestor by Wise Woman and Rion. My middle passage morning song began so loud in my head that I had to go home and reclaim my ancestral spirit. She appeared in my travels to the slave castle on Gory Island in Senegal, Queen Hatshepsut's temple in Luxor, Kemet, which is Egypt, and Elmina Castle in Cape Coast, Ghana. Her spirit embraced the cellular wounds from my family's middle passage journey buried deep inside of my psyche. She sat with me in the cells that housed African female and enslaved women and held my hand as I cried for all of the suffering. She was with me on my knees as I prayed for the healing and wholeness of every African who passed through the door of no return. She reminded me of my rich legacy as I stood in July 110 degree heat, taking in the majesty of Queen Hatshepsut's temple and the work she did to make Kemet great. As I stood facing the Nile River in a healing circle of Africa's descendants, she whispered in my ears, your ancestors are at peace now that you have come home. They give you the gift of peace. Take it with you back to America and spread it in around for all to see. And so one of the things that I do in my work is that I honor my ancestors, I honor myself. And this is an invitation, especially for those that come from the descendants enslaved Africans in the Americas and everywhere, all African people everywhere. This is an invitation for us
us to come home to ourselves in the way that works best for you. So thank you for being here. I want to flip the camera real quick on my sister friend Tanya, if she lets me, just so she can talk a little bit about her art. All right, Tanya. I'm going to sit down. Okay. Am I in the shot? Yeah, now you are. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever in time and space you feel you are. My name is Tanya Butler Truesdale. Some people know me by Ada Joke. That means favored by the king, favored by the crown. And uh, I consider myself to be a craft person, a servant, of course, a mother, a daughter and uh, an Ishe Shea follower. Much of my work is in the form of gifts that people can purchase to give to others. I'd like to share the feeling of giving something to someone that they value. And I do reading cards, I do personal care products, and um, anything that is collaborative, here's some jewelry, Ananda's reminding me to mention the jewelry, um, anything that will bring value to someone's life, that is simple, made of objects that aren't often highly valued until they are presented in the right way. I can be found on Etsy. I believe it's under Shea Butter Boy. I should know, right? <laughs> but I'm too busy creating to market. Um, and I do have a website. It's called SilkySawSmoothShaeButter.com. And um, yeah, that's it. 